spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raises Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And God has blessed to his word in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
for now. Uh, Faith Kingdom Ministry serves the community by providing food for the hungry. If you know of anyone, um, any family that may have maybe a need of food, please inquire about the next date for their food distribution. Um, and I just want to give some words of encouragement today. God will never leave you empty. He will replace everything you lost. If he asks you to put something down, it's because he wants you to pick up something greater. In Jesus' name. I think you could choose a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank the Lord for those announcements. Uh, amen. If, if you know anybody that's hungry that need uh, food, the food uh, came yesterday, and the rest of it is supposed to be here on Tuesday. Amen. So we have, we do have a lot of sweet stuff, like in the cans, uh, peach, peach, uh, peaches. Uh, What's the other stuff? Fruit cocktails. Fruit cocktails, just a lot of stuff that, you know, that give you diabetes and put people in early grades. <laughs> you know, so we we really don't need that. We're waiting on the string beans and the uh, corn, uh -huh. something that's going to help us live a little longer. Praise God. So, hey man, we have a lot of bread coming on Tuesday. Yeah. You want to come by? We got, we got the freeze out there. We got plenty of stuff to give away. Amen. We get ready for the man of God. We thank God for uh, the pastor. He's the, he is the district elder, praise God, of our uh, diocese. Praise God. Because we have a lot of church. We have about five churches in this diocese. Amen. He's the district elder of this area. So I thank God touched his heart to come and help us out. Amen. But we need help. Yes. Amen. We thank God for him consenting to come, to leave his church, to come and help faith team the ministry. Amen. So we just praise God for that. Thank God for all of you that have visited today. Amen. Just like to thank the Lord, especially for Diane. That staff, Diane. She's from New York. Praise God. My daughter's friend. Good to see her. She's a nurse. Amen. Also. Amen. If anybody got, anybody got any problems today, she can help you. <laughs> thank God for her. And thank the Lord also for my friend from uh, Refuge, uh, Tisha. And Aisha. 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 Will y'all please stand? Aisha and Aisha. They didn't have to come visit us today, but we thank you for coming. Amen. Would you like to have anything to say? Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Aisha. Thank you for the invite, Aisha. Thank you for the invite. Thank you for the invite. All right. Amen. Get ready for the man of God. Uh, I'm going to sing this little song, and he's, the next voice you hear will be that of Pastor Samuel Smith from the Apostolic Mission Church in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Praise God. If you say a prayer for this preacher, amen, God has a word for you today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah! And I know God's going to bless us today. I feel it in my spirit. He's going to bless us today. Amen. Get ready for a word from the Lord. Sit in prayer. Be attentive. Let God speak to your heart in Jesus' name. Ha, hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. It was a good, it's a good song. Maybe the Lord don't want me to sing it. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it right there. Pastor's ready. Somebody say right. amen. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I am honored to be here. said that Jesus was transfigured. James, John, and Peter said, Lord, it's good that we, that we should be here. And I feel so honored this morning to be in the presence of God and to be in your presence. And all I can say is God is a good God. Yes. And he's worthy to be praised. 
Mother Robinson started to tell me that Elder Robinson was around town picking up people. And I said to her, I with a smile, I said, I know what he's going through. We started our church. We're going in our, we are 35 years old. Praise the Lord. And in that time, God had really smiled on us. And God will smile. Because God, if you always put God first, praise God, God will work out something in your life. I, I want to, uh, it's in your song book. The words are Alpha, of Alpha, and of Omega. Because we come to worship.
first at Factory Scott Church on September 12, 1982. Praise God. Just turned 35 years old. And uh, so I know how it is. But uh, so I wanted to encourage him. And uh, so I asked him, what can I do to be a help to him? And he gave me an answer I certainly was not looking for. <laughs> I had something else in my mind, and he said, you know, if you come on Sunday morning, praise God. <laughs> I was not expecting that one. But I said to myself, and I thought to myself, and the Lord directed my heart. I said, you know, praise God, whatever I can do to bless this man of God and encourage his heart, praise God, that is what I want to do. And so... Uh, I arranged my schedule in my mind, praise God, because um, uh, today we are traveling to Jamaica, New York, to Springfield Gardens, to Bishop Winningham, to help him <laughs> celebrate his 40th church anniversary, pastoral church anniversary, 40 years, and uh, a very dear brother, praise God, who has been such a blessing to us, and we have been to him as well in these 35 years and so we're going there this afternoon and uh so i wouldn't have preached this morning anyway because <laughs> i've got to preach this afternoon as you get older you got to use a little wisdom yeah. praise god otherwise you burn yourself out but i thank god i thank god for being here i really do i'm impressed with the blessings of the lord and that's what it is, because without the Lord, we can do nothing. Praise God. Hey, open your Bibles with me to the first book of Samuel, chapter 14. <coughs> My subject is going to come from verse 6. But I'm going to begin at verse number 5. This is first bit book of Samuel. Now, uh, I came bearing gifts this morning because I again asked Elder Robinson what I can do to bless him. And then he thought on later on and said, you know, if you gave me some Bibles, uh, praise God, that'll bless me also. Amen. So I bought him two cases of Bible. Hallelujah. Actually, Amen. three cases Amen. of Bible. Amen. So, if you don't have a Bible, somebody will be more than happy to pass them out to you. Praise God. Because I need everybody uh, so we can be a blessing to the house of the Lord. Uh, first book of Samuel, chapter 14. First book of Samuel, chapter 14. You know, your Bible is your faith. Did y'all know that? Faith coming by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Your faith is your Bible. Your sword, your defense is your Bible. Praise God. You can't go on what people tell you. You gotta go according to the word of God. For the only thing that's going to stand is God's word. Amen. Praise God. I know there are some things in the Bible that people don't like. Some things in the Bible I don't like either. Praise God. But whether we like it or not, God's word is always true. We can't make it and please God without his word. Praise God. Uh, we don't teach or preach what we feel. We go according to what God said because let God's word be true and all men lie it. Uh, did you know that Satan, I know I'm talking, uh, Satan is a deceiver. 
priest God. You can't listen to the devil. Satan is a deceiver. The Bible said there's a way that seemeth right to man. But the end thereof is a way of, of death. Amen. You can't go according to what you feel. You have to go according to the word of God. <coughs> For this way requires that we walk by faith and not by sight. And your Bible is your faith. Praise God. You put your faith in the word of God. You put your faith in what God said. And you'll find that your life will be much more filling in Jesus' name. Uh, from the word of God, as it arises from the first book of Samuel, uh, chapter 14. And again, my subject is in verse 6 for the Lord there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few uh, beginning in verse 5 the formed front of the one statue northward over against Mishmash and the other southward over against Gabeah Jonathan said to the young men that bear this armor he said come let's go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised it may be that the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. The armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in thy heart. Turn thee. Behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Gracious eternal Father, our God and our Savior, Lord, we thank you this morning for allowing us to be in the house of God. Oh God, to give words of encouragement to these your children. Father, we ask you to bless your word, oh God. Lord, we pray that let your word be established in everyone's heart. That, oh Father Jesus, that they might grow in the grace and the knowledge of God. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you might give us that faith that we might be overcomers, oh God. For Satan, oh God, is on our track. But Father, through your word, we can overcome him. Oh God, we pray today. Give us your word today. Speak to every heart, every mind, and every soul. I pray right now, Lord, do something for us. We'll give you the glory. The prayer, the honor shall be thine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jonathan said, For there is no restraint to the Lord. For he can save by many, or he can save by few. This is an important message for us because one of Satan's devices that he uses is he tries to discourage us. Discouragement for a child of God can be deadly when you get discouraged. It's one of his, the Bible said we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Satan will try to discourage you and he knows how to discourage us because sometimes we count numbers. Praise God. If there's just a few of us, we get discouraged. And if there's a lot of us, all of a sudden we get a lot of confidence. You know, in this story, in chapter 13, before we just read, the children of Israel got discouraged because they had an army of 3,000 people. And Saul, the king of Israel, Jonathan's father, took 2,000 and left Jonathan with 1,000. And they made war 
with the Philistines. And when the people of Israel saw the army of the Philistines, and it was a tremendous army, much people, praise God, they also had weapons of iron. They had chariots. Praise God. They, in other words, they were well outnumbered. And when the 2,000 people saw, that was with Saul, saw the Philistines, <coughs> they got discouraged at mishmash. And what they did was they started to hide in caves. They left the army. They became deserters. Praise the Lord. Uh, they hide in caves. They hide in the woods. Praise the Lord. They went everywhere they could so that they wouldn't have to fight because they knew, praise God, they felt that they were going to be defeated because they were outnumbered. And then that was 1,400 people that left Saul. And left Saul with 600 people, praise the Lord, to fight against the Philistines. And even Saul, the men that was with Saul was also afraid. And they started to desert also. And Saul tried to hold them together. Praise the Lord. Discouragement can cause us to go the wrong way. Praise the Lord. When we don't have faith in God... And don't realize that the God that we serve is bigger than anything. Yes. Praise the Lord. And that he can do exceedingly abundantly. Yes. Praise God above all that we ask to think. Uh, whether it be sickness or whether it be discouragement. No matter what the ailment is. Uh, yes. There is nothing too hard for God. Uh, in the name of God. No. Uh, praise God. So the Bible teaches us uh, that saw that Philistine, I'm sorry, that Jonathan and his men, uh, they, praise God, saw the Philistines. Uh, and Jonathan decided, praise God, that I'm going to go fight Praise God against him. Yeah. Because God can save by many yes. or God can save by few. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God can do anything but fail. Yes. Or oh, praise God. So people need to realize that God is not just a Sunday thing. Because you can call on God at any time. And God answer prayer uh, in the name of God. Uh, you find that God, praise God, works best uh, when people are relying on him. Uh, that's why there are times where, uh, praise God, we are afflicted on every side. Uh, seem like nothing is working in our favor. Uh, oh, praise God. In fact, the psalmist uses these words uh, and said that, praise God, many are the affliction of the righteous but the Lord delivereth him out of them all praise God it's God that worketh in us both the will and the doer of his good pleasure you can't do nothing by yourself you may say I'm not strong enough praise God I'm inadequate in all these ways but when you learn how to Pray and put God on your side. You'll find that He more than praise God. They that be against you. Praise God. That's why the scripture teaches us that praise God. The psalmist said, I will run, praise God. Hallelujah to the hill from which cometh my help. For my help cometh from the Lord. Oh, praise God. We got to go to Jesus Christ and tell him all about it. This isn't working. That isn't working. My son, my daughter, praise God. My children, praise God. My husband, my wife, those on the 
job. Whatever our problem is, the song said, we can take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, praise God. How often, hallelujah, we forfeit. Hallelujah. How often, praise God, we give in to the problem instead of taking the problem to God in prayer. Jonathan said, pray the Lord that there be, hallelujah, that God can save by many or he can save by few. Praise God, there is no, praise God, determining factor. You don't need a certain amount of number in order to get to God. You don't have to have a congregation of 500 in order to approach God. You don't have to have a Mercedes Benz in order to approach God. Hallelujah, you don't have to have the finest clothes in order to approach God. Hallelujah, Bible tells us his ears are open unto our cry. Oh, praise God. And so on the battlefield, Jonathan said, the God of the Israelites, the God that we serve, he's available to us at any time. We don't have to wait for my father. We don't have to wait for this one, that, or the other. That the Lord's eyes is on the sparrow. Did you know that car, his eyes are over you at all times. No matter what you're going through. No matter what the difficulties is. Praise be to come. When you come to the Lord, the Lord will make a way somehow. Oh, yes, he will. The Lord will touch your soul. The Lord will encourage your heart. And say, I'm with you. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. God can save by many. And God can save by few. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. When I look at the scripture, I was thinking to myself, praise God, where did Jonathan get this kind of faith from? Didn't Jonathan know that he was outnumbered? Didn't Jonathan know, praise God, hallelujah, that they didn't have the finest weaponry? But Jonathan, praise God, he must have been thinking about the God of his forefathers. He must have been thinking about the God that brought his family out from the dungeon. Out of, out of Egypt, hallelujah. Over the Red Sea. He must have been thinking about the fact of all the miracles that he heard that God did. That's why I said the word of God is your faith. Oh, praise God because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Jonathan heard about what God could do. He heard that God is a battle rat in the time of battle. Oh, praise God. You may think to yourself, well, I haven't been saved long enough. I don't know the Lord like that. But when you call to Jesus and you say to him, Lord, strengthen me. Lord, praise God. I am your servant and I need you to use me. I need you to be bless me in the name of Jesus. Sometime we got to act like Jacob. When Jacob was in, when he was in Bethel, praise God and God, the angel appeared to him in Bethel and he wrestled all night long with the angel. Oh, praise God. And the angel said to him, the day is breaking. You got to let me go. But Jacob said, I can't let you go until you bless me. Hallelujah. In prayer, you may have to 
to wrestle with your flesh. You may have to wrestle with your mind. You may have to wrestle with your problem. But once you get a hold to God, you better tell him, I can't let you go until you bless me. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold on to you, Jesus. I'm going to hold on and let you work this thing out. I'm too weak. I'm not smart enough. I don't know enough to get through. But I thank God. I got a car that sits high. That look at low. I got a car that said I am Alpha. Omega. I'm the beginning. I'm the end. I'm the first. And I'm the last. Got the keys to hell and death. Got everything you need. Put your trust in Jesus. Put your trust. Put your trust in Jesus. And he'll work it out for you. He'll work it out for you. He'll work it out for you. He'll work it out for you, church. Oh, praise God. God can save by many, but he also can save by few. Oh, praise God. There is no failure in God. There is no failure in God. No failure in God. When God said it, he's able to perform it. When God said it, he's able to make it good. Oh, praise God. In the name of Jesus. Let me share this story with you. Oh, praise God. Because the Bible teaches us about Praise God, Gideon. Hallelujah. In the book of Judges, chapter 7. When Gideon was called to fight against the Amalekites and the Midianites. And the Bible said that these two groups of nations were so large that they were like grasshoppers all over the place. In the name of Jesus. And Gideon, praise God, he got called his brethren from the different tribes and amassed an army of 32,000 men to fight, praise God, because the Lord said to Gideon, thou mighty man of valor, I want you to go fight against these people in the name of Jesus. Oh, praise God. When God told us to do something, God already have a plan. How he going to get it done? He just going to use you in order to work out his will. And you just got to be submissive and say, Lord, not my will, but thine will be done. Oh, praise God. And when Gideon had finished amassing his army, oh, praise God, the Lord said to Gideon, you got too many, oh, praise God, I can't give you the victory like that, hallelujah, let me tell you something, there are times in your life, God got to pull the rod out from you, because you think that you're more than what you are. You think your education. You think of your good looks. You think of your knowledge. You think of your children. Or your husband or your wife. But I got news for you. All the time. If God don't help you. You're going down. Hallelujah. God looked at Gideon. And said Gideon. There's two many of you. I can't give you the victory like that. If I bless you, 
you. You want to think that you did it all by yourself. Some of us think that we were lucky, that we were in the right place at the right time, that we knew certain individuals, and that's how we got where we are. But I got news for you. If God didn't step in, you would have been going down. Hallelujah. You better know where your blessings come from. You got to know where your blessings come from. Your blessings come from the Lord. Praise God. It comes from the Lord. Whatever you own, whatever talent you have, praise God. And let me share this with you, because some people say, no, I ain't got no talent. I, I can't do nothing. That's another trick of the enemy. Amen. God never called an individual and didn't give them something. Thank you, Jesus. you might have a talent different than me. And I can have a talent different. But whatever talent we have is all for the glory of God. I was watching football yesterday, college football. I watched the kicker. Yesterday was kicker's day. In this game I saw this kicker came out kicked a 52-yard field goal, kicked a 49-yard field goal. And his team won the game on the strength of that kicker. And then I saw the Penn State-Iowa game last night. And I said to myself, look at that kicker. That kicker makes three field goals could have easily sealed the game. Easily. Penn State won the game, but they almost lost because of that kicker. In fact, the first kicker was from the Georgia Bulldogs. He were, and they had the camera in the locker room yesterday. Because after he made that kick, where Georgia beat Notre Dame. This guy had to pay for his college scholar school. He didn't have a college scholarship. And then in their locker room, the coach, he was going to tell the players, but he said, no, I'm going to let the kicker tell it. Kicker got up and said, the university gave me full scholarship. I don't have to pay for no more school because he kicked the winning field. And then I thought to myself, I said, you know something? The team, T-E-A-M. Now, you know there's no I in team, right? If everybody do their job, the blocker's got to block, the runner's got to run, kicker's got to kick, punter's got to punt, quarterback got a quarterback. God's kingdom is the same way. We all are part of a team. And God has given us certain talents for us to profit with. Praise God. So that we can build the kingdom of God. Because let me tell you something right now. While we're in this assembly right now, somebody is crying. <laughs> Somebody's heart is broken. Somebody's praying to God. Saying, Lord, help me. Somebody don't know which way to turn. Somebody need a word from you. You say, I can't give them no word. Yes, you can. You can tell them about Jesus. Yes, yes. Praise God. 
You got talent. God put you into his body for all of you to work with. You say, but I can't sing. <laughs> God didn't make everybody sing. I, I can't play the organ. Everybody didn't, every, God didn't make all organ players. I can't play the drum either. Everybody's not drummers. But that doesn't mean that you can't do nothing. Let me share this with you. Most of us know the story of Cornelius, am I right? Book of Acts chapter 10. Cornelius was a devout man. He was Gentile. Didn't have the Holy Ghost. Didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost. Didn't know nothing about God. But he did and lived all that he knew. The Bible says he was a very generous man. Gave alms. He blessed those that came in contact with him. He was praying one day. Angel came to him and said, send for Peter, who's at the house of Simon the Tanner and Joppa. Go get him and let him talk to you. That's why it means somebody's praying right now. Somebody's crying out to the Lord right now. Because one thing about the world, the world can't give you what God can give you. The world cannot satisfy. Did you know if you had some dead Jack Daniels last night, you got to go back to get some more? Did you know if you stopped by the corner drug dealer, you still got to go, go back some more? Can't satisfy. But the Holy Ghost can satisfy the longing soul. The Holy Ghost can fill your empty soul with goodness. Jesus can satisfy. Praise God. We need to work for the Lord. While this day. Remember God can save by many. Or he can save by few. Don't let the spirit of discouragement come on you. Because somebody didn't like the way you did it or said it or somebody thinking about 20 years ago or whatever the case is. Praise the Lord. It's not about them. It's about God. And we got to allow God to work out our salvation in Jesus' name. Would you all stand with me? Lord Jesus Christ, our Holy Father, God and Savior, Lord, we pray that something that was said might be a blessing to these your children. We pray, Father, that something that was said, Lord, that it would not fall to the ground. But, oh, Father, we pray you would bless this ministry Bless this pastor, Lord, yes, Jesus' name. Amen.